It's 35 degrees Celsius. The cattle need to be in the shade, but there's little of that to be found in the Guancasta region of Costa Rica. Gregorio Chavez has been working on this cattle farm for three years, and he's seen it get drier here every year. Everything in the region has dried out. That's why we have to buy straw for our livestock as extra animal feed. As you can see, the fields here are totally parched and grazed down to the roots. Across the region, large areas of land were cleared and tropical forests disappeared to create grazing land for cattle. The Manta Alto Nature Reserve is just 200 kilometers away. The park rangers are gradually reforesting the land here. Their efforts are supported by the government and ordinary citizens. The steep hillsides are being replanted with native species. The German Nature Conservancy organization, Tropica Verde, is also supporting the project. Miguel Mendes and his colleague are pleased with the progress they've made. It's an urgent task because the effects of global climate change are very evident here. In the past few years, we've seen an enormous change in the temperatures and the amount of rainfall. That's why we've been planting trees, especially at the higher elevations. They provide a natural screen and protect the ground against the sun's rays. The reforestation project is vitally important for the people of Ohancha. Over the past years, they've had to make do with less and less water. The deforestation of past decades depleted groundwater levels. Then the local residents joined together in a citizen's initiative and bought land in order to reforest it. Many local residents contributed whatever they could to help bring the forest back to life. It was a dire situation. We even had to bring in drinking water from other areas to supply the residents, the homes of Ohancha. The water shortage forced the school, hospital and other public institutions to close. Planting a variety of native species has helped the tropical forest begin to regenerate. And the water is returning as well, because the trees and vegetation help prevent erosion. The ecological balance here is beginning to recover. And the diversity of plant and animal life is recovering as well. The next generation is also learning how vitally important the forests are. School children visit the nature reserve. Miguel Mendez and his co-workers teach them about the complex ecosystem here. It's a chance to learn about nature and environmental preservation firsthand. These children will influence the future of the forests. They get a close look at the howler apes that return to the area once the trees began to flourish. Meanwhile, more than 25% of Costa Rica's land has been designated a protected area. Nearly all of the country's remaining old-growth forests are located in these areas. We head out with some scientists to Makenke, a protected national park. This is where the great green macaw lives but the chances of seeing one of these beautiful but endangered birds today are slim. But then, a surprise. Each breeding pair needs around 500 hectares of lowland rainforest. Researchers from Costa Rica's Tropical Research Institute and their German colleagues hope to expand the national park. That will give the rare bird species a better chance of survival. But preserving the habitat of the great green macaw is no easy task. 
This bird feeds on the seeds of a tree that fetches a high price, up to $4,000 per tree trunk. So the demand for forest resources is high, as is the demand for land, especially because of pineapple farming right now. It's a struggle between the environment and biological diversity on the one hand and economic interests on the other. The pineapple plantations are beginning to encroach on the nature reserves. Monocrop cultivation requires a great deal of water and chemicals to achieve a high yield. Today, Costa Rica is one of the largest pineapple exporters in the world. But the planting methods used in Monte Alto are proof that other options exist. Decades ago, coffee plantations here depleted the soil. But now, coffee growers like Olivia Cruz have switched to using mainly natural fertilizers and little water. The residents of Monte Alto would like to expand the nature reserve, but land is now too expensive. In 1992, the first year of the project, one hectare cost about $1,000. Meanwhile, the price of land has rocketed, particularly because foreigners are buying it up. In some areas, land is selling for $20,000 a hectare. Local residents can't afford to acquire more land. Still, they know that their way of life completely depends on the regeneration of the ecosystem.